All right, hello and welcome to our Wednesday night. Uh, this is another interview. Uh, you've probably already seen the interview with Ron and Renee Delamarter, and tonight I'm really happy that we get to have a conversation with Doug and Terry Nelson. Doug is uh, one of the elders of our church, and Terry is his wife, and both of them are uh, wonderful people and faithful servants in, in our church body. Uh, Doug's smiling, so he agrees, I, I know. Um, but tonight, what we're going to do is just give you an opportunity to hear their, uh, their heart and their life story and some of the spiritual things that God has been doing in their life. And so I hope that you're blessed by this conversation with them. So uh, let's get going. We get to do the fun questions first. Uh, tell me, tell us where you were born and how you came to live in Minnesota. I was born here, uh, so I've lived here all my life other than the two years I was away at Hardy, so. Okay. Okay. How about you? Um, well, I am from Oklahoma, and I came here um, because I married him. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, that's how I ended up here. Okay. How did you, um, I guess this is a follow-up, is how did you end up uh, as a part of the Richfield Church? I know that's a long story, but yeah. but knowing your history, that'd probably be helpful for people. Um, yeah. Um, well, we had, I had spent most of my well, we first came when I when my family first came into the church, we were members at Richfield back in the early '70s, uh, from '74 to about '78, uh, until my <clears throat> my parents were divorced at the time, and then they actually remarried and were remarried at Richfield, and then. My father had to relocate his business, and so we ended up relocating up to the North Metro. Mm -hmm. So then we ended up moving up to Fridley, and we started attending at Brooklyn Center. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so that's the congregation I grew up in. I um, just in the <clears throat> over the years of growing up in the youth group, and that uh, uh, spent summers at Flaming Pine. By the time I was senior year of high school, that was my tenth year at camp. Uh, and then just active with the youth group and active with the other youth groups around the Twin Cities. Um, then we were, you know, after Terry and I got married, uh, and I came back from Arkansas, um, we we attended at Brooklyn Center for a number of years, and then we decided we kind of wanted to try something uh, different, so then we, uh, we, I can't remember if we, we went to Roseville for a while, mm -hmm. and then uh, then we ended up at Richfield. Okay. Yeah. And so then we were at Richfield. Then we ended up going back to Brooklyn Center for a number of years. For a number of years, about yeah. ten. Mm, I don't think quite that long, but okay. yeah, we did. Okay. Anyway, and anyway. you've been a part of Richfield now for a long time. Over. Well, it's got to be ten years In... since we've been back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Easily yeah. ten, yeah. if Maybe not 12. more. Okay. Yeah. Very good. All right. Thank, that was an add-on to the original question. So thanks for <laughs> thanks for answering that. So tell us, what are your hobbies and interests? What do you, What do you guys enjoy doing? Uh, well, I love photography okay. and crafting. Um, Doug and I like to travel, and we just like to get out and drive. Just clear our mind and just drive the back roads, and it, that's just something we've. We have the opportunity to do now that we didn't have the opportunity to do for many years. So we are enjoying being in this place and able to just go when we want to. Yeah, up until eight years ago, uh, when I took the job I have now, I was pretty much from the time I was uh, married until until eight years ago, uh, I was working two to three jobs pretty pretty much all the way through so mm -hmm. we didn't have a lot of time to to travel and do things and uh yeah. so um just it was we've been, always kind of been a, a single income family by choice so that terry could be home with the kids and so had to <clears throat> had to work extra jobs just to kind of make ends meet so not that i have zero regrets about that uh it was perfect for us but uh you know now things of life life things have changed and so we're able to kind of rediscover what it was like before kids and start traveling we're like hey this is kind of nice <laughs> it's fun <laughs> it's fun again. So. so what i hear is just get get rid of your kids and then life can be fun again 
No, we, no, no. Okay, <laughs> no. We we've truly enjoyed having yeah. our kids, and we've we've always been a very close family, and yeah. took trips. Yeah, some camping. families. We do started that. camping before. About two thousand seven. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So that was fun. So we had, we had some great family trips. Okay, very nice. So, what do you currently do for work, and what has been maybe the strangest job you've ever had? Uh, well, I'm an assistant fire chief for the city of Burnsville, and uh, I've been a firefighter now for 31 years, and so that would answer part two of your question as well. Okay. Like, there is a, every day is different, and okay. every time, you know, I've, I've run into people said, I've seen everything, and I've been doing this a long time, and I'm still every once in a while amazed on the stuff I come across, so. Okay. Yeah, there's just a lot of strangeness. Um, well, I've always been a stay-at-home mom, but um, six years ago when we moved here, I started um, a little hobby, a little hobby business. It's not really a business, but anyway. Um, and a friend of mine and I uh, make signs, stuff out of wood. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's. You're allowed to say the name of what what it is. So. Okay, I'm like part of two girls in a pallet. Okay. And it maybe should be one girl and a boy and a palette now because Jenny doesn't, she doesn't do a lot with it because she's homeschooling and anyway, she's got a lot going on. So, um, so Doug has stepped in to help me and mm -hmm. he's really good. At the pay is terrible. Yeah. <laughs> Your wife's love and affection. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Not that piece. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, good. Um, if you could go anywhere in the world on vacation, where would you go? Go ahead. You can take this one first. I know where I want to go. <laughs> well, I would really like to go. Doug's been to England, <coughs> but I would really like to go to England because when I was in grade school, I had a pen pal, mm -hmm. and she was from Loughborough, England, and Doug has been there, and I would just like to go, and I would love to find her, and that would okay. be really fun to do. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. I've always wanted to go to England and yeah. the UK. So. Yeah. And when I went to England, I was staying in a town 10 miles away from her friend was. Yeah. Okay, that's fun. Yeah. But what about you? So. I would love to go spend some time touring around the South Pacific. I would okay. love to go to Bora Bora. Okay. Could never afford it, but okay, that would be. I would love to do that. So what? What would? What's made you want to go? Like, why is that your ideal vacation, or what well, inspired it, that? <clears throat> it's kind of a. It's a combination of just the geography of the area, probably coupled with the history of the area, and then my family's history. So. Okay. Uh, with my granddad's service in the South Pacific. I would just love to see some of the places that he was He at. was. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Uh, who was your childhood hero and why? Mine's just really sappy. I, I just, my, <laughs> my grandmother and my mother were just great women of faith, and they really inspired me, and they went through some really difficult things, and um, they... I would say they were my heroes because they were mm -hmm. amazing women. Yeah. Okay. How about you, Dad? I would, I would say probably my dad. Um, I never had a whole lot of time for sports you know, <clears throat> sports heroes. I don't view them as heroes. I just, mm -hmm. I just never have. Um, uh, but probably just watching my the way my dad kind of handled the way life came at him, the way he treated people, um, you know, just his integrity. Um, even when he was treated poorly, he always responded. You know, he would get frustrated, don't get me wrong, but um, he would always, he would go the extra mile with people. And I, I always, I always admired that about him. Sometimes it frustrated me, mm -hmm. you know, that he would, would um, sometimes repetitively give people chance after chance, but... Um, that, I guess that's kind of one of the things that always stuck out to me is he just kind of the, the his character and the way he handled himself. Okay. Yeah. Is there anything in particular about your mom or your grandma that stood out to you? <clears throat> well, my grandmother didn't finish high school. Okay. I think she got to the eighth grade and she had to work with her family and help her family and my grandmother had lots of kids so she was helping raise kids and 
So she got married and my granddad went to war. And so mm -hmm. she was alone and she had to work and she had my mom. And, and then when my grandpa came back, she, she went back to school and got a college degree and mm -hmm. she was a school teacher. And uh, those were just really hard things. And she just did them. Yeah. Uh, she just did them. Mm -hmm. And um, she just, she just made everybody around her feel like they they were so loved. Yeah. And so I, I just, I, I would love to be like that. I just would aspire to be like her. No, oh, well, both of those are great, great yeah. answers. Okay. So what's the best thing that happened to you this year and what was the hardest thing? I told Doug, I'm going to fudge the timeline a little bit because I just lost my grandmother a little over a year ago. And that was the hardest thing mm -hmm. um, because she was like a mother to me and, and just so Im important in my life and my spiritual life. And she prayed for me and, and I just feel the loss of those prayers. Um, but so that was the hardest thing. And, and I think that the best thing, still fudging this just a little bit, is um, just the whole COVID quarantine thing I was with my family and everybody was here and as a mother that's 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 important <laughs> to have your people close and and we got to take a trip right before everything shut down so those were those were big things Good. to me yeah okay what about you I would have to mirror what Terry said honestly I mean when Myrtle's passing was it kind of came on suddenly and um, and then she was gone so that was that was tough. That was she, I she was my, for all intents and purposes, she was my grandmother too. I had her as my grandmother just as long as I had my other grandmothers mm -hmm. who had who had predeceased her. So yeah, so she she really was my third grandmother, and uh, um, so that that was tough, and it was kind of tough for the whole family. She was. Yeah, if you start thinking about the center of a family unit, that would be Myrtle. I mean, she was the you know, you know center of the universe of of Terry's family and kind yeah. of our whole family. So, yeah. and she loved him like he was her own. <laughs> like, there was no <laughs> distinction. Yeah, she she loved him like her own. So, yeah, so that was special. So that was tough, <laughs> and I would agree the the trip that Terry and I took before COVID was probably the best thing out of the last year. Yeah. Um, you know, I enjoyed having family close, and so there was, as tough as it was, those were, you know, there were some good times in there, but just that, that trip that we had, we we really had a great time, and just got to spend a lot of time walking and talking and on beaches and, and touring different things, and it was just, it was, it was, I was so glad we took the trip, especially after everything closed down, so. Yeah, okay, good. So we're going to transition now into some of the spiritual questions and so the first one on this is uh, how and when did you become a Christian and can you tell us about your conversion experience well go ahead okay I was 12 mm -hmm. so um, I, I just remember feeling that that I wanted to know this peace and joy that I felt like I would not have unless I were in Christ mm -hmm. um, but I was from a Christian family, and I had a good Christian uh, church family, and so my conversion was pretty basic. I mean, well, so I I hear uh, many Christians who grow up in Christian families discount that experience or, or or make it seem lesser, but in truth, it's 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 maybe doesn't seem as exciting as other people's. But what a blessing! Right, that you had people yeah. in your life teaching you about God uh, and the gospel. And yes, eventually you had to choose whether or not you yes. believed this for yourself and you were going to live as a disciple. But um, uh, I think it's just as exciting as people that, that haven't grown up with that yeah. and then found it Christ later in life. So It's been more, um, it's been more uh, I don't know what you would say, um, that foundation that I that I was given that I that I took for granted when I was young, yeah. I no longer take for granted as mm -hmm. as my faith yep. matures or or yep. ebbs and flows. You know, I, I mm -hmm. just um, that was my foundation and it has sustained me. So yeah, that's that's good. My story. Okay, what about you, Dad? 
Um, I was baptized, if, if I remember correctly, when I was 13 or early 14, somewhere right in that. I, I don't remember the exact date anymore, but, <clears throat> um, yeah, it just, it had been kind of on my mind for a while, and, and the minister that we had at the time, um, he just, he'd done like a series of lessons that had really kind of caused me to do some, you know, thinking about, you know, when you come past that, we start becoming aware of the, the bigger world around you and your place in it, mm -hmm. and and uh, learning about, you know, just learning about Christ, learning about heaven, learning about hell, um, learning about salvation. Uh, so that started making, that was the first impression I had. I, I would say that my mom, when, from the time she came into the church, she was a great example to me in that she she always made sure that that we were at you know at church and she was out she would read the Bible with us every day like we'd sit down yeah. and uh, so we'd read Proverbs and um, when I got in trouble I had to write Proverbs I don't know how many <laughs> times so um, which we pass along to our kids but uh, so and I and. The whole time I was growing up, my father wasn't a Christian, and so he wasn't always necessarily super supportive of her desire to be yeah. at services three times a week, and he didn't make it easy for her. But she kind of she stuck to her guns, and and so the times spent at the table with her in the in the Bible study, and then those quiet counseling parental moments of, you know. If she sees it, she'll tell me. But, uh, <laughs> but kind of the dripping faucet conscience of like you know when when I <clears throat> when I would start to say or do things or get upset about something, she would kind of always be there to, you know, try to get me back on the back on the path. And yeah. so, um, so that was that played a huge you know, her influence on me played a huge influence as well on my spiritual journey. So yeah. Well, and a part of your story is that eventually your dad did become a Christian. He did. Right. And he did. surely that was also her influence in his life yeah, she, over, she, over many years. And in spite of all the struggles they went through. Is right. That, yeah. Yeah, he wasn't baptized till probably about a month and a half before he died in 2005. Mm -hmm. And so um, and my mom became a Christian. Like in 1974, 1975. So um, she worked on him a long time. <laughs> she never gave up, mm -hmm. but she always, you know, she always thought that that he would come around, and he finally did. Unfortunately, it took him getting sick and and yeah, you know, losing pretty much losing everything, including his health, to kind of humble him. Because for all the qualities that made him such a great person, it also hindered him in other areas so yep. uh, that was a life lesson learned there too so yeah. but no she she stuck to her guns and she she definitely was a big part of that journey mm -hmm. well the, you know the truth is sometimes our well typically our greatest strengths can also be our greatest weaknesses right. so they hinder us in other ways in life um, right. so but thank God that there was grace in his life that he wanted to become a follower of Jesus before he died so right yeah. Okay, well, good. Thank you both for sharing. So how do you see God having worked in your life, and where do you see the providence of God in your story? Boy, <laughs> Tara and I have talked about this a lot. Um, I, <clears throat> I I couldn't tie it to one specific thing, Ethan. It, I think back to the whole journey of even his early going and as far as back as going off to school and me and Terry, I mean, just mm -hmm. how things work out. My first seat in chapel was up in the nosebleeds at the Benson, and the guy that sat behind me smelled really bad, and <laughs> I couldn't stand it up there, so I requested a chapel seat change, and the change took me from all the way in the back to literally row three down front. And Terry, I think you had she had changed chapel seats too, so we ended up kind of both, you know, sitting on the same row. And I was sitting in between two twin sisters, and then Terry was on the other side of one of them. 
And so that's how we met uh, in chapel, because the one between us kept falling asleep <laughs> in chapel on my shoulder. And so, <laughs> so it was just, that's how, that was how we actually kind of met. But, uh, so that was, you know, providential decision. You know, <clears throat> that was probably part two of that journey. Part one is I was actually going to go in the military right out of high school. And so I was sitting down with the papers in front of me to sign to go in. And that's on the way out the door to go to the recruiter. I just gotten an acceptance letter from Hardy. Mm. And so then I was like, I had a decision to make. I was like, if I sign here, it's four years. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, I knew a bunch of my friends from camp were going off to Hardy. And I thought... I can always go in the military. I can always go in the army. So maybe I'll try school for a semester and see how it goes. Yeah. And if it goes great, then I'll finish out, and then I can still go in the military. Um, if it doesn't, um, then I can always, after a semester, go join up. So as fate would have it, I met her the first semester. So yeah. So anyway, so that was this. That was the very earliest piece, and then all through the. The journey of our married life together it's just it's been one thing after another and we've been through some really really hard things over the course of our marriage and just with life situations and that and every time early in it it was hard to see God's providence working but after going through some of those things early it made farther down the path that we got it has made it easier for me to remember back of like hey this was really bad and then he did this so just hold on because there's a reason for this I don't know what it is yet but and so that's how I've um, that's kind of how my brain works and, and it's helped sustain me and so I've been able to to pick those out sometimes a lot quicker than I think I would have or that I was able to early on okay yeah so. I think experience with God's faithfulness in the past right. helps us to see his faithfulness in the present, um, even when the circumstances are hard. Uh, as, as he was with us then, mm -hmm. he's with us now. And honestly, it's given me a lot of peace to, to deal with things now as they come, as I don't, they don't become as, you know, scary or as devastating when you're going through them. It's just like, this is a tough time that we're going to have to get through and we'll get on the other side of it and and just lean that much harder into prayer. How would you say, answer, Terry? Well, I, I would start by saying that going to Harding and meeting Doug, that, that set me up on this path. Mm -hmm. And I also think that I came from, from a very sheltered, very structured uh, home life, life in general. So when I came here, uh, lots of things went sideways because I was just very used to Bible Belt. Yeah, uh, things being structure. a certain way, you were yeah. used to a different culture. Yeah, and yeah. I and I went from my dad would would come home at you know he would come home at the same time we meet dinner at the same time went to bed at the same time everything was the same. To I never knew when he was coming home. I never knew if. He would eat a Same meal way. with me. You know, I never knew when he was coming and going. So it really, had I not had the foundation that I had, um, I, God knew that that I was going to need some. Yeah, you could have really, you could have really experienced all that and said, what's wrong with our marriage? Yeah. Because this is not what I've been taught to expect. Yes. But, and, you, and but you had to adjust. I did have to adjust. Yeah. And yeah. I didn't always do it perfectly. Um, but I, I, I see God's hand in, in our life together because I think lots of people, um, don't stay together for a lot less than what we have been through. And so, uh, having God at the center, uh, has, has kept us on the, on the right path. Yeah. Um, and, and my upbringing, um, has kept me, you know, grounded and, and I've had lots of prayers and very spiritual women around me to help to help keep me upright. <laughs> no, that's good. Thank you yeah. for sharing that. Uh, how do you per pursue continued growth in your relationship with God? Are there any, any practices or things that you do 
consistently that you see help you grow? That's always kind of, that's been a little bit of a challenge for, for us trying to make the time just kind of with, with scheduling stuff outside of church. Um, Fire but, calls. Yeah. <laughs> well, what well, I'm asking, but, like individually, yep. it, it doesn't have to be like you together, yeah. but yeah. you as individuals or but together. We, have, we, we strive to do that together. I mean, that's, we've, yeah. we've worked our whole marriage trying to, um, and I think now we've kind of come to a place where we, we have the time and, you know. Yeah. I mean, for us, mornings are, are, we've made time in the morning to do that. So before we work, before we leave is um, get up, get ready for work. Uh, we have coffee. And then we will sit and we will do a Bible study. And uh, that that has really just been intentional about making that time as a couple. Mm-hmm. And then uh, outside of that, you know, just as far as I'm not sure what she does, but I spend a, I spend a lot of time in prayer. And uh, um, for me, that just having those talks with God have have really helped me with that. Yeah, technical difficulty. Sorry. <laughs> we want to make sure we can still see ourselves and <laughs> and see what's happening. So, uh, sorry to interrupt like that. No, that's okay. Okay, what would you say um, for you, Terry? I would say for me, um, my mother has again been very instrumental in supplying lots of books and things for me and for the girls and and then reached out with other women in the church to have devotionals and bible studies and um that's that's invaluable to me okay to have that yeah very good okay uh has there ever been a time that you failed or let someone down and how did you deal with that or learn from that situation Boy, when when Terry and I were talking about these questions last night, there's and she she knows both of these stories, but probably the two that when when I read that question that popped to mind immediately, are, you, you don't get through life without regrets, and so probably two of my biggest regrets that I have is when I was a kid. Um, you know, the first one was as a, you know as a really early teenager. Uh, up at Flaming Pine, and there was uh, one of the other campers up there that I actually went to church with, and she was quite a few years older than me, and and I I said something to her one day that was just really, really an unkind thing to say, and she, and I didn't realize at the time, but she had some developmental issues, that was, you know, that wasn't even on my radar screen, and and she was poking at me or something and so I said something to her that was just horrible and she passed away probably when I was around 22 Mm -hmm. and I never apologized to her and I could tell after I said it that it that it hurt her feelings and I carried that I still carry that regret um that I wish I would have gone and tried to make that right. There's no way to make it right but to apologize to that. And so um, that was, I've that experience, it, it kind of really, it really made me think about being intentional with what you say. Because mm-hmm. um, I didn't mean it as harsh, you know, as harshly as it came out, but it obviously... It, it hurt her very bad, and yeah. um, unfortunately, I'll never get a chance to apologize. So, um, and then as an adult, probably I don't know five six years ago, uh, I was with a coworker, and we went down to a, a wild game down in St. Paul, and so we had to park kind of a, a ways from the, the uh, stadium down there, and we were going through an area where there's. There's a lot of homeless, a lot of homeless people, a lot of people with substance abuse issues, things like that. And I had, I only had like twenty dollars on me. It was a twenty dollar bill, and that was for the whole evening for what we were going down to. And uh, so as we were cutting through there, this this young gal, she, I would say she was in her mid twenties. She was obviously homeless, obviously had substance abuse issues. And she came up to me and she, you know, said, you know, can I have some money? I'm, I'm really hungry. Well, my immediate work side is like, no, you want to buy, 
you want to buy dope. Like, no, I'm not giving you my 20 bucks to go buy dope. And so <clears throat> I didn't say that to her. I just said, yeah, no. And I just kept on going. And I got, I got inside to the, uh, the Excel Center, and I started. And it started on at me, because I thought, you know, I've got daughters that are at that time they weren't mm-hmm. in their twenties yet, but getting close to that, and I thought, you know, that was somebody's little girl that, yeah. for whatever circumstance, you know, whatever decisions, whatever circumstances in life, there she was, and maybe she really was hungry, and I just walked away from her, mm-hmm. and it just it ruined, not just that night. But for weeks after that, I just felt horrible about that. And on the way out of the stadium, I didn't buy anything that night. So I kept the 20 in my pocket. And I was hoping to find her on the way back to the car. Because I thought, I don't, you know, whatever, I'll take her and buy her food. But I didn't find her. And I've always, I'll always regret that missed opportunity as well. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing both those things with us. And, I, you know, the reason I asked that question is I think we all... Uh, every one of us have things that we wish we could go back and do differently where we've failed, we've messed up, we've hurt other people. Uh, and those those moments in our life tend to be the moments that change us the most um, or we, we learn the most from them. And so uh, there's, there's something powerful when we can talk about those things and help other people learn from what we've gone through. So thank you for sharing those. And... Uh, you want to go, Terry? Uh, um. Yeah, I. Mine's very personal, and so um, a few years ago, something something happened to our daughter that was very impactful for her with her life in a negative way, and um, it challenged everything within me as a mother and a wife and a friend and everything, and I found myself retreating and just going inward. And I kind of shut out some people in my life that didn't deserve to be shut out uh, because it was it was within me that I was I was feeling judged and um, and so I I've kind of been on a journey to to kind of um, fix that um, and I'm not proud about it but it it's really been a growing thing for me spiritually. Um, and embarrassing too, you know, that, that I, that I, at this age and that I would, um, kind of shrink back from life, um, because of something that, that had happened to me. So, um, it's, it's been a journey for me. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. And I would just say is, I think, um, most people can relate to that is that sometimes we have experiences that, um, make us afraid yeah. of, of if people knew uh, or if they do know how are they thinking about me yeah. um, uh, I don't know what to do I don't know who to talk to right. I don't know how to deal with this and so it's very easy to uh, you know withdraw yeah. or to fight or to you know we have all these responses yeah. when we feel very anxious about things that happen to us and yeah. the people we love and um and I appreciate that you recognize like that you withdraw because typically when we're tempted to withdraw from other people who love us, those are typically the times when we actually need to <laughs> lean into those relationships yeah. so that we're not walking through it yeah. by ourselves. Yeah. But you've gone through that experience now and you see that. And so I think there's something really healthy to be able to say that and share that with others and yeah. to say, uh, if you're going through an experience like that, don't withdraw. Right. Or there are other people who can understand what you're going through yeah. and love you through it and help you and encourage you. So. And I would be one of those people that understand. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. And that's, I, I, t- I tell people, I think you, know, you can see this in Second Corinthians 1, is that um, Paul talks about that when we are afflicted, when we suffer and whether, you know, whether he's talking about Christians suffering for the sake of the gospel or suffering in general is that God is the one who comforts us in our suffering so that we would become people who can comfort others as they go through similar suffering. And so God, God is the one who redeems even our hardest experiences. And so, uh, 
talking about these things is a way of letting God redeem them and, and remind others that they don't have to be alone. So thank you for sharing that. Um, what unanswered questions do you have about your faith? Um, I thought about that question quite a bit, and the, I guess the, the big one is is, you wonder if you will ever get to a point, where you think you've got it all dialed in, like where. Because as a younger person and growing up, I, I think of great spiritual leaders that, I, that I've that i known and both in churches where I've been and then uh, Terry's church and where you go, wow, if I could, I want to be like him or, or her, you know, have that. And as you get older, you understand that that's a journey to get there on the one hand but the other hand is is you don't see the behind the scenes either of what they've been through what they're dealing with you see you see their successes you don't always see the failures and so you wonder so it's very easy to have this idealized like yeah wow like yeah will i ever be at that Mm -hmm. level yeah and i and i think the the way you've thought about that is like the answer is no, like, <laughs> like no, they weren't. They weren't as put together as they. Sometimes we see people in pu- in their public. We see people kind of in their best, like when they're out in front of others, and uh, we don't always get to see what's going on in the background of people's <laughs> lives or in their interior life. And um, I think there's something amazing as we do see spiritual leaders or people who are farther ahead of us in the journey, and we do see like clearly God has done work in their life, and they are at a more mature place in their faith. But the truth is, is they would tell you, if you were to ask those people if they felt like they had it all together, they would tell you no. No, let me tell you about all my problems that I'm still... uh, They would probably be able to say, like, by the grace of God and the work of the Holy Spirit, I see that over time I'm more becoming more like Jesus, but I still am not going to be there. Uh, It's God's going to continue to work in me till I die. And then finish it up when Jesus comes again, but um, that's it's still a good question to ask. It I, is. I mean, yeah. it, it's more so yeah. just for the quiet assurance of like not that, not that you've completely nailed it, but that you feel a lot closer to the mark than yeah you well, are here. Well, so it kind of it kind of goes back to the question of do we believe we can change, right. or do we believe anyone can change? Right. And the gospel says yes, but sometimes it is painfully slow. Right. And, and we wish it were faster, or we just think, man, if I could just be this, this person, or like them, I, I would have made it. But, yeah. What would you well, say? Mine is uh, supporting that too. I was this past week, um, a lady in my hometown congregation passed away, and just uh, another one of those really spiritual women that I looked up to, and. Um, I, my mother was friends with her, her daughter was friends with me, my daughters were friends with her, mm-hmm. with her daughters. So it's like a generational thing. And she, she quickly um, got sick, she went to the hospital, they said she has a month to live. Mm-hmm. They took her home, she, she, they gave her some medication and her, do- she, her daughter said, um, Mom, here's, you know, here's some medication. And she goes, what is that? She goes, well, it's for agitation. She goes, well, what do I have to be agitated? I've waited my whole life to go to heaven. <laughs> and, that, I, and that response judged me as a, as a Christian because I, I thought, would I have that faith to say that, to feel that way? And she, I know she felt that way, or she wouldn't have said it. So that's, that's what he's talking about, and, and, and that played out this week in my home congregation with this woman, and she passed away yesterday two days ago two days ago to her reward so same with my grandmother so those things encourage me they scare me but they encourage me and they build my faith yeah so i think i think that's that's good because part of what christian faith is about is not just teaching us how to live but also how do we die yes 
Uh, you know, how do we, the decision to become a follower of Jesus is a decision to die, yeah. to die to ourselves and to live for God. Yeah. Um, and and it, it's the only thing that can enable us to accept death in the way that your, your uh, sister in your home church yes. did. Um, so, no, I think that's good. Go ahead, Doug. My, father, my dad had a very similar, that, that about a day and a half before he went unconscious and then he died the next, so this would have been about two days before he died. Um, one of the last conversations I had with him while he was awake is I was sitting there in his room and uh, he was hospicing at home. And just kind of out of the blue, he said, he goes, you know, he goes, this cancer thing is the best thing that ever happened to me. Mm. And I looked at him, and I'm like, did you double up on your meds? <laughs> <laughs> and he just, he chuckled, and he said, no. He goes, I'm serious. I'm like, how can you say that? Because um, I, I watched, you know, cancer just, it took him from a 240-pound 200 guy that was, he was one of the strongest people I ever met, down to, um, I think at that time, he was probably about 120, 130. And he just, he looked like he literally walked out of a concentration camp. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was just wasting away. And he, he smiled and he said, he goes, he goes, I'd love to explain it to you, but you just wouldn't understand. Mm -hmm. But he goes, no, he goes, this is the best thing that ever happened to me. Well, he, you know, he I had been able to baptize him about a month before that. Yeah. But just the, it was the first time I ever saw my dad in his life at peace like mm -hmm. he he had a tough tough life and he and he always weathered it and he, and he weathered it with a um, just an incredible integrity. sense of humor integrity, integrity. but also a, just a just an incredible sense of humor about things uh, an ironic sense of humor but he uh, he uh, when he said that and just the peace and I'm like I've, I've never forgotten that and, like it kind of is like well I'm, that's good that gives that gives me hope so <laughs> yeah. and then with what uh, what um, what she said the other day um, it's just it's interesting it's just interesting like you said yeah. well, you know preparing to die and um, you know we all do so well uh, I'm looking at our time and we probably <laughs> need to wrap it up okay this has been great. I do have one final like, question, and it's not on our list, but um, you know, you have a chance to talk to the church, uh, to anybody that may be watching this. Uh, is there something you'd like to say to our church family? A word of encouragement or love? Anything in particular you'd want to share with them? I would just ask for your prayers, um, just as an elder, as a as a fellow member of the family, um, you know that. We can always, yeah. Terry and I can always use prayers for different things. So, and, and uh, so that would be my thing. I guess I would say we have had some crazy life experiences, and I would say we we are good people to talk to. <laughs> we we've been through a lot, so we can understand a lot of life situations. Okay. Well, very good. Well. Uh, all of these sounds are telling us it's time to wrap up this interview. Uh, what Ethan's not telling you is he's waiting to eat dinner. And we're going to eat dinner too. So uh, thank you so much for watching this. Uh, please express your appreciation to both Doug and Terry. Uh, we love them and are thankful for them and for their service to our church family and uh, grateful that they would willingly share their life and uh, their relationship with God with you. Uh, hopefully you found this helpful and encouraging. Thanks for being with us. Bye.